evening, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and all of you are doing great. So let me introduce myself. My name is Deepak. I have 15 plus years of experience in the same field. I have designed, developed, and implemented solutions for various organizations. In this today's webinar, we are going to talk about you know Google BigQuery. So basically, part of cloud computing. So uh, moving on. Now this is the agenda for today that we are going to talk about. You know why Google BigQuery. Before that, we will just get a small understanding. What exactly is cloud computing? What is GCP? We'll talk about why Google BigQuery. What exactly is Google BigQuery? Some of the features of uh, BigQuery, uh, its architecture, the overview of BigQuery storage, and ingest, uh, ingesting data into BigQuery and the pricing. So now let's get started and get understanding why Google BigTable. Before we talk about it, what exactly is the cloud? You know, what exactly is the uh, virtual machine? Virtual machine is basically is the simulation of a computer system. So now what exactly is GCP? GCP mm -hmm. basically stands for Google Cloud Platform. This is a cloud service which is basically, you know, being provided by Google. So uh, we are in, uh, you know, Google is going to host your entire data on their platform. So you can do everything. You can create virtual machine. You can create database. Any of the things that you can do at your on-premise platform can be done on the cloud at the safe of ease. At the same time, you can perform that integration with different tools technologies that uh, Google has very easily. So now let's talk about, you know, why Google Big Table. Before we talk about, you know, why uh, Google Big Table, what is the use case of it? Why exactly we should use Google Big Table? These are a couple of advantages. So it has unique data warehouse services. So your data is going to be, uh, you know, kept at uh, various locations, various places. So it has a unique data warehouse services. It's not like that. Um, you know, at the same one data center, you are accumulating all the data for all the customers. So it uh, basically provides you high availability, and uh, at, at the same time, it has the unique services for each of the user. Second is ease of implementation. To work on this is very easy. Some people think that oh, it's a cloud, so it's very difficult for you to use and implement. If you have to, you know, segregate the network, it's still going to be very complex. So once you're going to work, you will see the interface. You are going to get. Uh, an opportunity to work on this and dive in more detail, you will see it's very easy plus the speed. It's very fast. Now, for example, you are going to create the resources. Let me, you know, give you a very small example. I have to install an operating system on my laptop. How much time it takes? Approximately an hour, right? Or if I have to also, let's say, uh, you know, create a virtual machine on my system, it will take how much time? Approximately an hour. Here in the case of Google GCP platform, you can spin up the resources in you know less than five minutes. If I had to create a virtual machine, less than five minutes I can create it out, and uh, you know it's not going to be an issue. So by the same time, uh, it's going to provide high availability as well. If my data is going to lost, like let's say if my uh, you know where I hosted my data, like in my on-premise environment at my data center, if the data center goes down, my entire data will go down, right? However, in this case, that's not the case. If your primary data center is down, it's going to perform automatic replication. So data is going to be replicated very easily. Now, what is Google Big Query? Let's uh, just get understanding of it. So before that, uh, you know, let's understand Google Big Table and Big Query. So basically, Big Query. Now we are talking about you know this guy. So basically, your uh, Big Query is a fully managed serverless data warehouse service that enables scalable analysis over petabytes of data so this is a pass which is platform as a service that supports querying you using ansi sql so you can uh, you know store the data in a large storage and whatever you're going to consume you're going to pay for it now what are the different features of it now coming to different features it has various features like first is serverless what serverless means it means that in order to run this there is no dedicated server required now you know that if i have to basically run the resources what i will need i will need a resource a virtual machine basically that way that i will require to run those resources right so it's a serverless you don't require the server without having the server you basically can you know deploy your resources you can access it you can integrate with the application plus since you are not going to use a server so having that overhead to manage the server performing the patching installing the updates you know even paying for that dedicated uh, environment you can just save the money on that second is scale so it basically you can perform the scaling as well you can basically perform automatic scaling at the same time uh, you know it it's, uh, basically supports petabyte of data so if you want to basically scale 
with uh, let's say you know more cpu more ram that you can do it very easily with this in addition to that in addition to scaling let's say you want to uh, increase number of uh, core processors as well you can do if you want you can write the script you can write the criteria for example if your cpu utilization is going to go high at a certain uh, with a certain amount so in that case in, in such kind of scenario what you can do is you, uh, you, uh, it's going to automatically increase the resources when the cpu utilization is going to go low it's going to automatically decrease the resources next is real time analytics so wherein you can basically inject the data from various sources in this and as you can see here towards the right you can see the progress like i want to see my company's going in profit my company's going in loss that each and every information at the stake of fees it's going to be available and you can get that information very very easily now next one is your flexible pricing model so it basically provides you various type of uh, pricing model that we are going to dive in more detail today so it supports flexible pricing model where you can uh, easily get um the you know uh, or i would say you can easily pick up the package depending on your need depending on your requirement in addition to that uh, you have to also uh, you know you, you can basically decide that i want to go with a monthly package yearly package i want to go with the services the way the services i'm going to do so that's something uh, you'll be able to have that entire uh, you know flexibility with this plus you have automatic high availability so whenever you're going to create the resources uh, in this case in the case of bigger google bigquery those resources basically are going to be um, you know replicated at the different sites depending on the site model that you're going to use those resources are going to uh, be you know replicated automatically at the same time it also supports data encryption and security so you know that nowadays encryption is one of the biggest requirement based on the ongoing hacks uh, so many companies were hit by the ransomware as well so in the case of data encryption what happens is your data is going to be encrypted automatically with the key and that key you can store in a key vault in a hsm depending on the requirement that you have so that also provides and, and now if, if i talk about the security it basically supports uh, you know rbac as well which is role based access wherein you can basically define that uh, you know like to which user which what kind of role you want to assign so all this, those things basically are available here as well at the sake of is plus there is no uh, you know specific uh, complex in, uh, implementation each and everything is designed in such a way that you can get a uh, you know easy interface with easy integrations as well you can make a api call using different programming languages like java python different apis are also available you just have to change the you know uh, some variables over there and you will be able to use it directly next one is st uh, standard sql so it also automatically have inbuilt standard sql uh, at the same time you can also uh, you know define your own database by you know creating a new resource in that you can also create your own database as well next is foundation of ai which is artificial intelligence you can integrate with uh, you know artificial intelligence as well and you can also integrate with bi as well which is business intelligence clear yeah. now moving on let's talk about the bigquery storage so in the case of bigquery source model it basically have five major components the projects the data set your tables your views and the jobs now here in this case let me just use this highlighter you know this is a project basically one project is boundary in that project basically you have a data set in that data set you can basically have you know a couple of tables so now in those tables you basically can have different views and you can basically you know have different jobs for it now this is a different project now likewise you can have different different projects here which can be integrated directly with your bqs which is bigquery service wherein you can easily you know query the data for example this project needs some data with uh, you know this project or this project needs data with this project or some different project needs the data with this project so this entire management that role based access control can be easily be done with your big uh, query service so that's again you know a little bit over here at a higher level now coming to the storage management that we have let's take a look uh, how storage management looks like of big query and uh, how it is different from others so this is at, uh, towards the left that you can see this is traditional rdbms storage where you are going to have record oriented storage like this is the one record second record third record likewise on the right side you see this is big query storage so where it uses the column level storage now even if i want to perform encryption i can perform encryption at one column maybe i have a data let's say you know uh, in one column i have name second column i have their you know last name third column i have their credit card number now this blue one is sensitive for me 
But if I go with the traditional RDBMS storage, uh, I have to basically encrypt the entire row. You know, it's going to be difficult for me. And at the same time, encryption decryption will take time. The operations execution will take time, which is going to be difficult. Now, towards the right, if we talk about, you know, BigQuery storage, we are going to have the column level storage where we are going to encrypt one column at the time. Here. Now, coming to the other one, which is storage management. Now, here in this case, as you can see, like we have this table one, table two, table three. In one region, we can have different zone. Different zones basically like your different data center. Maybe in India, I have this data center in Bangalore, second is Hyderabad, third is Delhi. So if one zone is down, my data is still going to be there at the second, at the third. Now here in this case, if you see, this second one is available here as well. It's available here as well. It's available here as well. So the same data from table two is pointing out to this. The same data is copied at the second zone. Same data is also copied at the third zone. So even and similar in this table one, this is copied in the first. This is copied here in the second. This is copied here in the third. Which is this one, this one, and this one. Now in the third table, the same data you can see is copied here as well. It's copied here as well. It's copied here as well. Now if one this one zone is going to go down, this is going to remain up. This is going to remain up. Let's say this one also got down. There was a network issue. Uh, so in that case, the third zone will remain up. Now you can have multi regions as well, wherein the data from one region is going to be copied to the other region as well. So that's why it basically provides you a very good resiliency and the data is going to be replicated automatically with the other data at the sake of ease. Now coming to LTS, which is long term storage. So if you have a table or partition which is not modified for 90 consecutive days, it is considered as long term storage and for pricing for the storage uh, for that table automatically gets dropped by 50% to the same cost as cloud storage in airline. So basically discount is going to be applied on per table per partition basis. That's the biggest beauty of it. So if you are not using it, there is no need. There is no requirement that you have to, uh, you know, change the storage type. It's automatically going to drop the uh, you know, price by 50% at the same cost. That's the biggest beauty of, uh, you know, the Google Cloud, if I would say, so that you are not spending a lot of money on that. Moving on. Uh, what are different types of data ingestion that we have? So we basically have um, batch ingestion. We basically have streamline. We basically have data transfer. Now let's talk about you know each of them one by one. What is the batch ingestion? So batch ingestion basically uh, you know involves loading pages. Uh, you know uh, basically having data set that uh, does not have to be processed in the real time. So they are typically ingested at a specific uh, regular frequencies. And all the data which is going to arrive, it's going to arrive at, at one time or it's not going to arrive at all. So the ingested data is then uh, queried for creating reports or combining with different uh, sources uh, where it can have data from maybe different cloud providers. It can have data from your uh, you know, on-premise platform. It is going to be appeared together and at the same time, it's going to be processed together. In the case of streaming ingestion, it's a bit different. In the case of streaming ingestion, or you can see in this diagram, um, you know, you are going to have your real time events. Maybe I have a service running, so it's it's uh, it's going to generate real time events. You are going to have basically the app engine, which is going to be integrated with your applications. Can be on premise, can be on the Google Cloud, can be on uh, you know any other third party cloud as well. And uh, these events are going to be you know fed together into your uh, messaging service. So any cloud model you talk about, for example, your uh, you know Azure, you have your Google or other, they provide the messaging services. So different type of messaging services they are provided with the help of which you can have the request response protocol set up based on which uh, you can also set the acknowledgement like the way TCP works. You send a request, wait for a response. If there is no response, you send uh, another uh, you know, same request again because it will consider that your request has been dropped. So with the help of stream pipeline, the request that you have received is going to be uh, going to the, you know, like, like a queue where you can have multiple pipelines all together because it supports parallel communication. And next one, you have a batch pipeline wherein uh, you can basically create the batch of series batch of requests which is going to be you know accumulated in the queue together and at the end it's going to process together then after that uh, you know you are going to have again this is a batch processing data which is coming from you can have a batch load where the requests are accumulated and uh, you know at a specific storage 
it, it, the certain use cases like your services are running maybe 2 p.m. every day, 3 p.m. every day. So it's going to uh, you know ingest all the services from different sort of sources to your environment at the same time, which is going to be processed by the cloud data flow and it's going to be processed together. Again, this is a very big topic, guys. Uh, all three types. Uh, we basically have a detail even this in streaming and ingestion. We basically spend almost an hour on this. However, uh, based on the time constraint that we have, that's why we are just talking about a bit overview of it. Otherwise, in general, this is a very big topic that we cover in detail. Now, the third service that we have is DTS, which is known as data transfer service. So your, uh, you know, uh, BigQuery data transfer service is basically a fully managed service to ingest data from your Google uh, SaaS application. SaaS is software as a service applications like your Google Ad, your external cloud storage provider like Amazon, you know, and different different providers we have. And you can transfer the data from data warehouse technologies like your Terra data, your Amazon Redshift. So all this thing basically falls into this category, which is data transfer service. Clear? Any doubt in this? Now, um, coming on to the structured learning at Eureka. So if you want to dive in more detail, you want to enroll for the course and you want to know what all the topics are. Like I said, we build in the transparency. So all this kind of topics, every information is available on our website. So let me just share the curve path, the learning path, how it's going to be there. So if you're going to enroll for the course, this is going to be the learning path. In the first class, you learn about Google Cloud Platform, how you can create your account, how you can set up the labs, its components, subcomponents with the hands-on on different topics. Then after that, in the second class, you will learn about how you can basically manage your Google Cloud Platform, its services, its component and subcomponents with the perspective hands-on. Then in the third class, you will learn about Google Cloud Platform, virtual networks, uh, what are different type of networks that you can create with the perspective and so on. Then in the fourth class, you will learn about security and identity fundamentals. Um, you know, how basically you can create different different uh, type of access. You can, how basically you can control the entire access with you. How basically you can give different permissions. How are the different roles that you can create uh, at the same time. You can also uh, define your own, uh, uh, you know, uh, structure like uh, how many roles you want, how many users you want. Because I don't want more than 15 users in a, to access a resource. So all these kind of things can be restricted uh, here that we are going to learn uh, with practicals hands on. Then after that, you will learn about compute services, different type of storage that you have, different type of, um, you know, services uh, that you can leverage and create in the case of cloud with the practical demonstration and the hands on. In the sixth class, you will learn about data storage services. What are different databases that it supports? The different ways of storing it. What are the proprietary of, uh, um, you know, Google? Uh, uh, Google has provided, you know, various type of different storage services which are their own proprietary. What are they? What is the difference between them? Uh, how you can select which storage services best depending on the use case with the practical hands-on. Then in the next class, you will learn about architecting with Google Kubernetes engine. What is Docker? What is how you can integrate Kubernetes, uh, you know, how basically Kubernetes look like in uh, GCP, how it is different from normal Kubernetes, uh, how you can integrate with Docker, each and everything you are going to learn in detail with the practical hands-on. After that, we are going to learn about, and in the eighth class, you will learn about application development. If you write, want to write the code, you want to develop the application, you know, how you can uh, do it, its components of components with the practical hands-on. Then you will learn about big data and AI services um, with the practical hands-on. And then in the last class, you will learn how you can perform automation on the components with the practical hands-on. So this is the entire career path. Uh, I would say the training path for your uh, certification if you're planning to take. Now coming to the pricing, if we talk about, we basically have a uh, two pricing model in the case of, uh, you know, uh, Google that it provides. One is analysis pricing. Second is storage pricing. Now, if we talk about analysis pricing, this is basically on demand uh, pricing. Uh, basically, it has flat rates pricing. In this, we have three models. First is you are going to have the annual model. You are going to be basically billed and paid annually. Second is on a monthly basis. Third is basically the flexible store uh, slots that you can choose. So this is again one of the example of the pricing model, the way it looks like. Uh, for example, queries on demand, you have to pay, pay $5 per TB. So first TB is going to be free. Uh, but after that, you have to pay five dollars with every TV, which is a you know a good deal as compared to other cloud vendor providers. Again, the same thing that I shared a moment ago. A different pricing model that it supports. 
Now, if we talk about the cost of a uh, flexible slot commitment, like you said, we have three types, the flexible, monthly, and the annual. So if you if we basically take a look at flexible slot, you know, you're going to get uh, this much slots and, uh, you know, based on average of uh, this is 730 hours per month, depending on your requirement, you can decide if you're using heavily, uh, do you want to go with the flexible or your monthly is going to be best or annual is going to be best. Likewise, if we talk about, you know, monthly, in the case of monthly number of slots that you get is 100, you have to pay $2,000 for that. In the case of annually, the amount is less. So wherein you are going to pay less, which is $1,700. Now, if you look at the cost, in the case of Flexi, it's, uh, you know, a bit more. Now, you basically look at the cost of your uh, monthly, it's high. Annually is less. So you can save the money on that. Now, in the uh, terms of storage pricing, if you talk about, it has two types of storage pricing. One is active storage. Second is LTS, which is long-term storage. So you have seen that in the case of long-term storage, what will happen that we even talked about a moment ago, which is, which has a benefit that if you're, uh, table or partition is not modified for 90 consecutive days that is going to be considered as a long-term storage and price of that storage is going to be automatically dropped by 50 percent that's why in this case you see for active storage uh, it's uh, the cost is 0 0.02 dollars 0 0.02 and for long term is 0 0.01 which is half because the price get dropped by 50 percent and in both the cases the first and gb are free okay guys if we can wrap up for today it was an immense pleasure to meet all of you guys. Thanks for joining this today's session. Thank you and happy learning.